Jeans, a beat producer from Cape Town. All my days I've been dreaming of a place where the beach is. I can already feel it. Oh, how I need it. How I do. You come with me, stay behind. This right here will change your life. But you said don't waste no time. When you know it only feels right. Yeah. Only feels right. Yeah. Feels right. Yeah. I think this is how a lot of people are meeting now. I know, right? It's so weird. But I like it, kind of. It's better than not meeting at all. What was your introduction to music and then specifically to creating your own beats? Like, do you remember the first track or the first beat? You know, I don't remember the first track I ever made. I've actually been trying to backtrack and I tried yeah. to raid my old computer and honestly, I, I can't even tell you. But my introduction oh, yeah, to music, so yeah, <laughs> so many files. My introduction to music was obviously through my upbringing. My mom used to play a lot of classics, but the, the moment where I knew that I wanted to start composing my own music was through playing the violin. And um, more so looking at, at the music I was given, you know, every time I went for a lesson, I was given a new piece of music to study and learn. And in my mind, it always baffled me that someone sat down and started putting these little, for some people it's like dots, you know, their notes and, yeah. and writing a piece of music to be played that sounded beautiful. And, and I think that's, that's what really sparked my interest is being able to kind of create from a place of no mind. You know whether it's yeah. your using your voice and na, 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 na. so yeah that's that's how i got into wanting to make my own beats yeah nice i actually saw a few interviews that you made and you mentioned even there that you were always interested in the in how music is made and then i saw you speak about how for you it's always connected to a visual and you mentioned something like a a, wait, a visual board can you can you break that down for me? What is a visual board? How do you where do you start? <laughs> so for me personally, I feel like artists are also inspired by the environments, right? Their surroundings. And I love to draw inspiration from the art that is around me. And I, I, I do often go into art galleries and spend time by myself and, and always envision what this piece of art would sound like if it was music. I'm a huge fan of uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat. So uh, even with my album that I'm working on, I've sort of put like postcards of his artwork near my <laughs> my my whiteboard. And I, I, I always try to try and track back to visuals because as, as much as we, we may not really pay attention to like album covers or whatever the case is, they do tell like a visual story behind the album and some yeah some um artwork covers are really a work of work of art and a masterpiece you know it's sort of like the art a door into the artist's mind or a door into the artist's world you know it's it can be a representation of that piece of music so um being a graphic designer has also played a big role in how i put together my pieces or how I, I, I actually work on my, I, de I design a lot of my own cover artwork, which is great because I'm very much in the process, you know? And it's all connected like for you, you know? It's like the artwork is connected to the music, it's connected to the process, that's really cool. Exactly, it's like this web of, of links that connect with each other. And I've always felt that um, my visual boards haven't been, it's not like, I have like a book with where I put all my visuals. It's really, if I pick up something or I go somewhere, you know, you have your phone on you, you take the picture, you, you put it in a, a drop, for me, a drop box. And, and it's a place that I can always go to and just sort of like throw everything out there, look at everything, be inspired. And then like, like put it away. I spend a lot of time on Pinterest for some reason as well. So yeah. my visual boards are all over the place. I was wondering because my brother, <clears throat> we're all musicians in my family and my brother is a composer and he plays the piano. And he told me a few weeks ago that when he listens to music, he always sees shapes. 
So whenever he listens to music, he would see shapes. And then he said that that's like a thing. Some people, you know, see more colors and he, for him it's shapes. So I was wondering if when you listen to music, do you also connect it to a visual? It's definitely, it's not just a feeling for sure. You know, sometimes people listen to music and it's a chill down their spine. Sometimes people could listen to music, close their eyes and envision themselves in this world. So it definitely, it definitely happens where I would be creating a piece of music for myself, you know, and I think a lot of artists always feel they need to create for other people or for fans and for, of course, you know, it, that's your livelihood. But when I create music for me, so something I want to enjoy, it definitely comes with some sort of visual interpret interpretation, you know, or, or just something abstract. I, I, I can't really put it into words, but it's definitely, yeah, it's, it's visually inspiring and, and also emotionally inspiring. And you recently uh, released your EP, Rhythm Chronicles, uh, during the lockdown. If I saw it correct on SoundCloud, I think I saw it, that it was like so-and-so days ago. Um, did you do that on purpose during lockdown? And when did you create those tracks? You know, I was kind of inspired by my peers who have been releasing music um on let me say bandcamp because that was really what i was kind of targeting they were wavering fees and i sort of i do have music on streaming platforms obviously itunes and, and wherever but that takes a long time for you to actually see any there, financial yeah. gain yeah. from it so bandcamp was like i'm going to test this out see if this works obviously i did enjoy creating the music that i did because it was a bit outside of my comfort zone dance music i normally do more electronic down tempo work so i thought it was it was a great challenge for myself not only to work on new music but to also see what i could gain from using a platform like bandcamp um yeah. so i put it out on friday and i remember thinking it's okay if i don't sell anything like if i make three dollars it's okay i feel like i've done something <laughs> But it is okay. I think there's probably always this pressure to think, oh, what if no one's gonna buy this or see this or listen to it? But it's like, you made it and you put it out there. Yeah, and, and I always think of what uh, Rick Rubin posts on his Instagram. He only posts one post and deletes it and posts a new one. And he said, once you put your work out there, you're successful, right? Yeah, I feel like during the lockdown, there's been a lot of room to think, a lot of room to play, a lot of room to create and essentially i have spent a lot of time working on my album but i've also felt that if i just sat working on the same thing over again i would kind of start to like dread the process and i think we all get to that point of yeah listening to the same thing over and over and over again so i i like that i could kind of step away from the album and work on on something like rhythm chronicles and mm -hmm. yeah I, it was received well for sure so I'm, I'm i'm glad i did it and i think a lot of the artists that i know, okay that i know personally are also in this space of not putting pressure on whether to release or not you know right now people have time to to consume music and listen and and possibly also just like contribute and help artists who are struggling during this time for sure, sure. I think Bandcamp is a great platform for that. I don't, I never really had it on my like radar Bandcamp, but I think it's cool right now, especially if you like an artist and maybe they're more unknown and you want to support them also like genuinely financially, because that's what we ultimately need. That's like a great yeah. platform to do that. Yeah. That's a great, it's so straightforward and it's not, it's not hard for the average user to use. I feel like a lot of people can get turned off by interfaces and setting up a profile and all these things. Yeah. So I like that it has a very simple interface and it's, it's straightforward in terms of like you put your payment details, you would sell something today and hopefully the money reflects tomorrow. So I've seen a lot of talk on people wanting to shift to that kind of direct you know direct contact with the artist compared to yeah. streaming sites and um yeah there's, there's there's a lot of work that could be done to support artists and i think like bandcamp has been really really helping out a lot of artists during this time for sure i think we covered most of it the last thing was just music for me is always an escape and it makes me feel you know it can make me feel better 
and happier. So I was just wondering what you're listening to right now during quarantine. Oh, I think, you know what? I'm actually so happy because I don't really get a lot of time to listen to new projects that come out as they come out. For me, it's sort of like yeah. three weeks or a month later, once kind of the hype has died down, I listen. But um, on days where I haven't necessarily been working on my own music and I would like do something or illustrate or do the dishes because we know those dishes are piling up. They're not going to do themselves. <laughs> it's terrible. It's like, I'll do it tomorrow. Why? Because I have nowhere to go. Yay. <laughs> so yeah. it's really, really bad. I mean, I'm a neat person to some extent, but um, yeah, so I've, I've not only been listening to new albums, also just podcasts. I love kind of being in this space, like music podcasts, trying to like, not only educate myself, but sort of like learn new information that could possibly benefit my career. You know, I feel like it's, it's so good to, to maintain a learning mindset, but back to what I've been listening before I go off on a tangent, um, <laughs> a lot of new releases, a lot of new releases. I know Tom Mish released something new and, um, crayon, a lot of underground stuff too. And obviously I've, I've bought some of my friends projects on Bandcamp. So I've been listening to a lot of, of a lot of like, uh, you know, maybe unpop, not unpopular, but people who are not really well known in the industry. Not that yeah. Who yeah. are yeah, exactly on, on, on major music platform radars, whatever the case is. So it's been very nice to, to kind of, yeah, connect to music beyond my own music, if that makes sense. Because mm -hmm. I feel yeah. like a lot of people have this thing of like, oh no, I don't want to listen to other music because it's going to, you know, change the yeah. way I'm thinking of my process. But I can, I can honestly say that I've really been enjoying listening to a lot of different people's like work and, and, and how they express themselves. Um, and in a time where I, I don't really always have the luxury to do so. So yeah, that's, that's been nice. Wait, can you also recommend some podcasts now that you mentioned it? <laughs> oh my gosh, I would. Okay, wait, okay, wait. Uh, okay, my phone's recording. <laughs> okay, don't, don't remember it. <laughs> There's one that I'm listening to. It's a group of girls from the UK who deal with, this is not a music related podcast, okay. but I really, really Still, love it. doesn't matter. <laughs> I love the back and forth banter and and just how raw and honest they are. Um, I've also been sort of just like there, there's some Pis Pisado's place, Pinsado's place. That's on YouTube though. I don't know. I think mm -hmm. they might have a, a podcast. I could be saying the name wrong. Please forgive me. Don't come for me. I yes. No. <laughs> and um, and there's the one with with Rick Rubin. I really like his channel. It's, it's weird because I don't really act. It's not like I wake up and listen to a podcast. It's sort of like I've saved the ones that I like. And then yeah, I'm just like, just yeah, it. you know what I've tried to do is someone's like, if you really want to remember someone's name, you have to keep saying their name over in the first couple of over minutes. Over. So Florian, how are you today? You know, or yeah. Gina, what's happening? Yeah. So Gina, <laughs> tell me about yourself. Gina, would you like a drink? You know, and then it sort of sticks. All right. I think we got it yeah that was really nice and and really insightful i like that the interviews that i've been having lately have i have also kind of um been different because i think a lot of people have this way of interviewing artists asking like the same questions and i'm just like oh my goodness yeah. i love that we had the conversation on visuals because it's it's really like i said before it is such a big part of of music you know um, back before yeah. you had MTV, before you had all this access to artists, you know, you get a tape with this little drawing of their music and all of a sudden you're like in their world. So it's very, very interesting. <laughs> Bye. 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 So Bye. Bye. <laughs> all right, that's it for today's episode. If you liked it, please leave a comment and subscribe to the channel on YouTube or on Instagram. Making room, so I open the window. I open the window.